Okay, well, um, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm the moder I'm Cy Daniels, I'm the moderator for today, but Felipe, Viviana, and Lasse are the speakers. Um, Dave Crossland may or may not join us, we're not sure. Um, if he does, that will be a treat. If not, I'm sure the uh, speakers um, will be able to uh, take care of everything. Um, so um, maybe we should start with just the speakers uh, introducing themselves and um, we'll just get started. Cool. Uh, so we have Lasse Fister, Viviana Monsalve and Felipe Sanchez, myself. Uh, we are all uh, members of, um, of, of the team that develops uh, Font Bakery and helps to, to prepare fonts uh, to be published on the Google Fonts uh, collection. So, Lasse, uh, would you like to self-introduce? Uh, yeah, I can do, sure. So, um, didn't prepare for self-introduction, so. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm working with Google Fonts, like, as a um, freelancer since some years, and the base, like, this program, we, we had to um, uh, work like since the beginning with it, but at some point we just decided to improve it um, because it had some, but I think you're going to, to, to talk about the history, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing basically uh, everything Google Fonts wants me to do. <laughs> <laughs> and Viviana is helping us as well. Okay, hi, I'm Viviana Monsalve. I'm a type designer from Colombia. Uh, I, I'm the news in the team. I entered there, there to help in the uploading or the publishing process of the, some uh, typographies to the catalog in Google Fonts. And doing that, I started to use the tool, of course, and I brought the kind of the user point of view to the team. And it has been a wonderful learning process. And I, I'm really glad to be here because I think this is a good, really good tool to improve the quality of the fonts. Okay. Uh, so, and I'm I'm from São Paulo, Brazil, uh, and I, I'm not sure if he mentioned, but Lasse is from Germany. Um, so let's start with the presentation. Yes. Uh, ooh. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about Font Bakery, and even though it is uh, used actively in the process of uploading fonts and preparing fonts uh, for, for the Google Fonts collection. Uh, and also it's got uh, financial support from Google for its development. It is not uh, an official Google product. So the, the opinions that we are expressing here are our own opinions, uh, which often are aligned to the interests of Google, but we are talking uh, about our, our own ideas here. Uh, so, Font Bakery is a quality assurance tool, and you may have seen uh, several different quality assurance tools, uh, but Font Bakery is, uh, ha has this ambitions, uh, ambition uh, of becoming the ultimate, uh, the ultimate font quality tool, so, so that we can uh, address all of the issues that people can have during the development of a font. So uh, we use a, a concept uh, called test-driven development and also continuous integration. These are two concepts from the software development world in which people who develop software want to make the software work correctly without bugs. And whenever you fix a bug, you don't want to have the bug uh, happen again in the future. You, you don't want to commit the same mistake twice. So whenever you fix a bug in a piece of software, you, uh, with, with the test-driven development uh, approach, we, we write uh, li small uh, routines to validate that that specific problem is not happening. And if, if the problem shows up, 
then that small routine would detect the problem in the software. So we, we basically adapted this idea of developing based on tests, uh, quality tests. Uh, we, we are trying to adapt that to the found development world. Uh, and the idea of continuous integration is basically the idea that once you have a collection of checks of, of code tests, uh, you would be able to run them automatically all the time during the development of a software project. And in this case, we, we are suggesting the use of this uh, for for the, the development of a phone, phone family. So instead of leaving all of the quality assurance to the end, uh, our our value proposal is that you do it all the time. Since the beginning, you start working on a phone project, you, you, you start using a quality assurance tool so that you have this continuous uh, quality assurance process that whenever you make a mistake, the tool will tell you that's wrong, you fix that. Uh, whenever the problem is detected, you solve them. And after that, you can rest assured that you won't have that problem anymore because whenever it surfaces, it is automatically detected and uh, you have this guarantee that uh, you will not be uh, carrying uh, a lot of problems to be solved at the end. So the idea is that you can rest assured that whenever you publish the files to the to the users, the phone files will actually be good. Okay, and uh, some of the ideals uh, of the project are that we, we want to make it really useful for everybody, like a universal uh, tool. So the reasoning behind this is that everybody cares about quality. So if, even if you think of of the of the type design industry, you have different players, uh, but people do not really compete on uh, based on the other players having buggy phones, right? No one really benefits from the other playing having buggy buggy phones. So if we can have these routines that ensure that the fonts are good for everybody, it is better for everybody. Uh, people are actually. Uh, competing in the market by providing interesting designs. And it is much more on the design level, uh, on the quality of the design that people are competing in the industry, right? Uh, to provide good funds, uh, but not really on, on, on the quality assurance, like quality is good for everyone. So uh, individual type, type foundries often do have their internal quality assurance tools and keeping those quality assurance tools secret is not really much of a benefit. And we believe that by having these tools developed collaboratively, uh, the industry as a whole can get better. So the idea is that we can share the quality assurance uh, routines and make this the ultimate tool, uh, the tool that will detect everything. Of course, it is not right now like that it's it's not a perfect tool because it's uh it's a moving target uh on what we need to check and 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 how to check correctly and what are all the problems that can show up in a phone project there, there's many things that we still have to uh, implement but uh it's an in, uh, ongoing development effort and we believe that by doing that collaboratively as a free software project uh, I mentioned here a Libre software project because in English the free uh, uh, the free word is uh, ambiguous. We're not talking about necessarily gratis software. We're talking about Libre in, in the sense that it's freely developed, uh, collaboratively developed. It is free for anyone to participate in the development, right? So Libre is a is a word from Spanish that. Uh, describes that better and without the ambiguity of the English word. Uh, okay, and then... So yeah, the, the idea is that Front Bakery is primarily a knowledge base. Uh, it's like a collection of uh, knowledge about all the ways that fonts can fail. And then based on that collection, uh, that, that, that collection of knowledge about the many ways that things can go wrong on a typography, uh, then we implement routines to check for those sp 
specific cases. And then based on the checks, we emit reports that give back knowledge to the users. So it's also an educational tool. So there's this other way um, uh, flow of information. So from the checks, uh, the users learn something new about uh, what, what, what is wrong with their fonts that they might not be aware previously. Uh, it's not only that people are not aware of the ways things go wrong, but also that there's so many things that can, can go wrong that it is good to have an automated way to never forget. You know, if, if something goes wrong, you, you, you don't want to forget to check that specific aspect of your, of your project. So having an automated tool also helps in that manner. So who's the, the, the target audience, the target users for Fonte Grief? So we're going to just describe a few scenarios. Um, the individual type designers who may want to be independent from a big publisher uh, and wants to publish uh, on their own. So do-it-yourself independent publishing uh, can use the tool to be confident of the quality they're doing. Uh, these are people who not necessarily have a large team of quality assurance people working on that. So having a tool that already embeds all of that knowledge is good for the small folks. Uh, but also the small foundries that may have already a collection of uh, procedures that they do, but not necessarily automatically. So they can use the tool to automate those internal procedures. Uh, and for that, uh, they can create what we call a vendor-specific profile. Uh, a profile is a collection of checks. So Fontaigre is just uh, this tool that has lots of checks, but these checks are separated into categories. Uh, we, call, we call them profiles. It's just a, a pool of checks. And the vendor-specific profiles have all the things that are not generally useful for everybody, but are procedures that uh, some vendor wants to perform for checking the quality of their fonts. So these small foundries can learn from the existing profiles that are already available in Fontaigre and take a look at what the other uh, larger vendors are doing. And based on that, they can copy and adapt, uh, embed some of the checks from from the existing profiles into their, their own, or they, they can even create their own vendor specific profile for the specific things that no one was checking before or that only makes sense for them and not for the other uh, vendors, right? And also uh, the font engineer in, in the daily work of uh, onboarding a font into a collection, uh, it's that idea of running the tool, the tool detects, detects that something is wrong and then the engineer can fix the font and then uh, uh, hopefully share the fix so that it's embedded in the tool itself so that other people can benefit from it as well. Okay, so uh, what is the way that it works? So we can have a quick demonstration. Uh, Viviana, do you have it uh, ready to share your screen? Yes, yes, let me go through the process. Okay. So uh, Viviana is going uh, to run the, the common line version of uh, Font Bakery. It is not the only way of running it, but it's the native one. Uh, so Font Bakery just... is initially developed as a common line program, but then we have some ways of having uh, nicer uh, user-facing uh, reports that we will show later. So please okay. don't, don't, don't be scared about the text terminal right now, but that's just the native uh, user experience you would get. And we can yeah. show the rest later. Do you already see my screen? Not yet. No. Um, hmm. uh, it you, says... you clicked on the apps and... Yeah, it's, I have a message app. here that says, disable sharing your screen, actually. But I don't see that in my. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to try it again. Okay. I think we can see something now, but just a black screen. Um, it's working. 
Is there a button show desktop? No, I just hit the screen share. The desktop share. And it is trying to run. Um wait. I have a new message. I just think yes. now we Yes, now we can see you. Yeah, I'm going to Yeah, ma maximize that window, yeah. I suggest Do you see it better now? Yes. Okay. So, um Jenna, I suggest you click the green button to maximize that window. Hmm. The green button in the in, in the text terminal dialog there's the maximize button so that the window is Ah open. yeah, I know what you see. What yeah, do you yeah. mean? This one. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's better now? That's better. <laughs> yes. Okay. Once you are in your project you go to your own folder and I'm going to run the basic command that we use for uh, Google. Oh yeah, check Google Fonts is basically telling FontAgree to run the Google Font profiles uh, profile. So mm -hmm. the checks that make sense for onboarding fonts into the Google Fonts collection. I'm not going to apply any log level now. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do it. Uh, but I'm going to export a huge markdown. Uh, oh, yeah. So the, the GH markdown output that she's uh, specifying that uh, there is one of the ways we have to have nicer output. Mm -hmm. I'm going to run it now but we will explain that later yeah sure and this is what you see while it is working so it's got a progress bar and the letters in the progress bar are the check results for individual checks and uh there's there are many skips the the blue letter s uh means skip uh so these are the ones that do not apply so there are some routines that only apply in certain conditions such as like a, a variable a variable font check will not run if the font is not a variable font so it's just skipped right mm -hmm. and you have the resume of the report here but also as i added that option to have a report i could open that file later but i think it will be yeah. But let's just scroll up uh, to show some of the results. So each, if each of the check, each of the checks have a check ID, which is that com.google.fonts slash check slash something. Uh, so the check ID basically identifies who developed the check. So com.google.fonts means that it was developed by the Google Fonts team or, or Probably myself, Lasse, uh, Viviana, Mark, uh, Mark, and some other people that work for Google. And then uh, the, the name uh, basically identifies the check. Whenever you have a problem and you want to open an issue to tell us, oh, this, this check is not doing things correctly or could be better or could, you know, you can refer by that name. So it's basically the name of the check. Mm -hmm. right? We have a brief description. And then a rationale. So a rationale is this longer description explaining why the check is important and what is the kind of thing that the check does. Mm -hmm. And after that, you have the actual log messages. So this one emitted a warning message. And you can read the message, and it tells, tells you something about your font. So uh, and now I think we can move on to the slides. Okay. Or, or, or you you could show also the markdown uh, output right away. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As as we already have the the file and screen share. Let me. 
I can. Ah. I'm not being able to reduce my. Ah, here you are. I'm going to close this here. I'm going to go to my. Um, maybe I can do this right here. Um, say. And here is my report. I already have this um, tool to read the report, an application that reads the markdown format. As oh, yeah. we are in our video, the the computer is really slow. <laughs> Please be patient. Um, yes, this is the report. Yeah, one important thing to mention is that uh, Markdown uh, is a, is like a syntax that is used in some places on, on the web to format documents. And uh, one of the places where it's used is on GitHub. And uh, as as many projects, many font projects use a Git repository to track the development of the project. Uh, and some people use uh, the issues system to to report issues about something that is wrong with the font family and then to address them and so on. Uh, we like to have the report in this format so that we can just copy and paste this markdown uh, report into an issue. And then the GitHub web interface renders that markdown into beautiful, um, into a nicer user interface for you to navigate. So you have this uh, drop down, uh, this collapse and uh, items that you can hide or show details. So you can see you have 14 results for, for family wide checks, and these are them. Most of them are pass, but there's one skip, but no, no warning, no fail. Okay. And then you can collapse that and then open the expand the other one. So for the regular font file, you have a few fails. And then let's take a look at one of the fails. The first one, check Google Fonts lacking core glyph coverage. So you can see that uh, something is missing. The division slash glyph is not provided in that font. And um, so this, this check is, is specific to Google because Google has this requirement of a minimum glyph coverage for uh, Latin fonts. So it's called the Google Font Latin Core Glyph, glyph Set. And this check is just in, in making sure that all of the glyphs from that base uh, glyph coverage uh, glyph set are available and one of them are, is missing. So whenever you see that, the way to fix that is that you just implement, you, you draw that, that glyph into your font and then it will pass the check. But right. this, I think this could be a good example of what a custom check will be because maybe if you are, are running a foundry and you have your own encoding that you are forcing all your fonts to meet, yeah. uh, you could implement your own specific, your own check to have these uh, warnings or failed messages in your fonts, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I'm going to let you to continue the slides. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And now playlist slides. Okay. There we go. Um, so the Font Bakery tool is able to run on OTF and TTF files, and it also checks some other files. Like, it, it, for instance, in the Google Fonts profile, we have some files that only make sense for Google. So there's a metadata file that is used for just providing information on how to build the user interface on the, on the website. 
and metadata about the font. So, uh, and and also to to help on the on the API of Google Fonts for serving files. So there's some key information about a font family that we we save on a specific file format called a metadata.pb. That's something that doesn't make sense for any other vendor other than Google, Google Fonts. So, but that that's one of the uh, additional files that are checked and description files for also for building the user interface in Google Fonts and may, maybe other other vendors would have their own specific requirements. So okay. it's not only about TTFs and OTFs. You could check other things as well. And so, so the, the the framework is flexible to to allow that kind of stuff. Um, and yes, uh, we, we we use this sentence at uh, batteries included. Uh, that's something that is typical of Python uh, to say that it's battery batteries included, meaning that it comes bundled with knowledge. It comes bundled with useful things. So Funpaper itself already has uh, hundreds of checks. I think we're close to almost 200s. Uh, I, I did not count the exact number, but I think we're close to 200 checks right now. And they are separated in these profiles. So as I was saying, uh, we already talked about the vendor specific profiles, right? But we also have the, the more generic uh, profiles. So we have a profile called OpenType, which has uh, checks to ensure that the font uh, is uh, OK in terms of the specification. Uh, so if there are things that the specification, that the open type specification says that a font has to do, uh, then we, we may have checks for that. So just to conform to the specification. And so this basically applies to everyone, right? And then there's also another uh, profile called a universal profile, which are things that are not specified in the open type specification, but are things that everybody in the industry does. So uh, some, some, there are some good practices in font development uh, that are not formalized in the open type spec, but everybody does. So we have this separate profile for that. Uh, with checks that ensure that these good practices are being followed. And then we have the vendor specific profiles. Right now, uh, nowadays, we have the Google Fonts profile, we have the Adobe Fonts profile, and I think we also have a Microsoft one, for, but basically just running Microsoft Font Validator, uh, which is a corner case. It's not really a, a profile with lots of checks, it's just one check that runs a third party tool. Uh, but that's what Microsoft used to use for font quality, as far as I know. Uh, and then you can have custom checks. So you can create your own checks locally. Uh, if you have knowledge on Python development, you can develop your local checks and run them using using Folk Bakery to run them, but the, the actual implementation is, a, is in a separate file on your computer. Uh, as I was saying, we, we have the font file later from Microsoft and FTX validator and OTS. These are some third party tools that Font Bakery wraps around. So there's one single check in Font Bakery that runs the full collection of checks of these third party tools. Uh, but it only runs if the tool is available. Uh, so if you if you don't install these tools, then those checks will be skipped. What will, will not run. Okay. But it's good to if you want to have uh, broader coverage, uh, you can use the third parties uh, tools automatically. Uh, it is not ideal, and we would rather prefer to have the knowledge from these tools migrated into native from Bakery checks. So we have uh, better log messages. Uh, uh, to to certain extent, uh, Font Bakery is the only project that is actually uh, making this effort to have clear user facing messages explaining the reasoning behind it checks uh, most of the tools that we have uh, other than font bakery 
just just perform some checks and it's kind of magic you know it's kind of a secret sauce uh something that whoever developed the tool knows and it it's harder to get uh a grasp of what's going on uh so we we, we would rather we would rather have these checks ported into front paper so that we can have better user experience Oh yeah, uh, we were talking about the the error messages, the fails and warns and skips and so on, the, the log results that Viviana was showing in the report. Uh, so there's a meaning for those. And we, we usually say that uh, a fail is a problem with the font, a warning, a, a, an error is a problem with the program. So if you get an error, it's a bug in, in Font Bakery. If you get a fail, it's a problem in your font. And then a warning is something that is not necessarily something that needs to be addressed, but something you should think about and consider. It, it might be useful to address, but the fails are really the things that are critical uh, that must be fixed. And yeah. the error, whenever you get an error, it's a problem with either with the installation of the tool, maybe you, you don't have a dependency properly installed or something went wrong in your system setup. So that's a system error. Uh, or it, it's font bakery that has got a bug. And so in that case, you don't have to worry about your font, but uh, we would appreciate if you could tell us that you faced uh, an error uh, by going into github.com, Google Fonts, font bakery issues and posting an issue there telling, oh, in this specific case, I was doing this, and I got this error message, uh, and then we can fix the bug, right? Uh, for the report, uh, as, as Viviana showed you, uh, if you export in Markdown, you can have this nicer uh, uh, rendering of the report, and you can do it by <laughs> using using GitHub, posting on an issue, you will see this, or you can use a Markdown editor such as this one, uh, or even this. There are, there are two choices. Do you remember Viviana which is which? I, I, I know one is web based and the other one is a local. Yes, app, the, right? the first one is the web based, and the second one is on a free application that they could download for Mac. The, the second one is mm -hmm. only for Mac, right? And the first one, any operating system, because it's web-based, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I, I think during the workshop, if you if you get one of your phones that you brought to check, you can try running with the markdown output and using one of these tools to to read the log messages, or you can use the text terminal if you if you feel comfortable with that. And. Uh, yeah, this is one example of a log message, but we already show you that. That's a warning. And the rationale is the description of what what's going uh, what's the kind of thing that the check is intended intended to uh, verify and why is it important and what what could go wrong if you do not fix the problem. So it's basically giving the overall context and that that's the the very special thing about font bakery our attempt to have these very precisely and detailed for every check in the collection right yeah and if you if your font is good you get a cupcake <laughs> <laughs> that's um, a lovely message to receive i have to tell yeah. you uh, probably some of you know Tony DeMarco uh, is a friend of mine, a type designer from, from Brazil as well. And uh, he, he designed this nice ASCII art cupcake to show whenever you run a font and you get 100% pass. So you get no fail, no warning, then you get a cupcake. Congratulations. Uh, so it is with no fails. No fails, right? You can, you can have warnings. No. Okay, no fails, then, then you get a cupcake. Uh, installation. So for, for the installation, I think is uh, we're getting into the workshop portion. W okay. Would you like to take over, Viviana or Lasse? Maybe Lasse. 
I don't mind, <laughs> but I, I, mean, I, I can um, install it, but um, I'm on a Linux computer, so I don't know if that helps a lot of people. But um, um, I could just start it and maybe get some feedback. Yeah, um, so um, I'm not sure. Um, we should we should first do it just with the slides, and then we can screen share if we need to show something. Let's just yeah. use slides. So yeah, we're going to create a virtual environment, which is a magic thing that you don't you don't really want to know what it is. But <laughs> just just trust us. This is in order to to make sure that you will not break your computer during this workshop. Uh, this creates a virtual environment, which is basically like a safe place where you can install things with Python, and it will not change the configuration of the rest of your computer. Right. I would like to ask the attendees uh, if they manage to install Python, if they already have Python installed, because this is going to require Python before they try to run it. Yeah, I'll take a look at the chat to see if people have some feedback. Uh -huh. Okay, no questions and answers, but the room chat has some conversation yeah. going on. The room chat has a comment from Aaron. From who? Aaron? Mm -hmm. It is worth noting that the fails are related to the specific test suite requirements and may not be a problem problem. Okay, yeah, that's that's something that w whenever you have a profile, like a vendor specific profile, you can you can have a check that fails and then another vendor profile can have the same check with a different log result. It could be just a warning. So it, it really depends on the policy of your project or your type foundry, uh, that some things you consider a hard problem, uh, something that really needs to be addressed, while for other people, for other uh, type foundries, uh, for other vendors, uh, they, they may consider this problem that is just something worth observing and thinking about, but not really, really something they need to address. It really depends on the policy of your uh, organization. And, and there is um, edge cases when you, for example, have some weird display font and it just does not need whatever, like a check that is more designed to check that your text font is is working well. So um, that's a semantic problem that in front bakery still have because we uh, need to work out how to make specific overrides for edge cases. Okay, we have a question. I have, I have Python 3 installed in, on my computer. How does the virtual Python differ from that? Uh, okay, the, the virtual environment basically gets, uh, let's suppose that you have different versions of Python in your computer. You may have Python 2, Python 3, you may even have multiple versions of Python 3 available. So uh, the virtual environment ensures that you have this separate environment where you have specific versions of Python and specific versions of the packages. So the dependencies of a project all installed inside that area. And um, if someday you install some program and that program had some dependencies and 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 now phone bakery has the same dependencies but with different versions then things may clash and by using uh, a, an, an empty uh, new virtual environment we can start from scratch and ensure that the installation will go smoothly uh, and that there will be no conflicts uh, this is more more of a problem if you already installed things using Python before. If you didn't install Python uh, anything with Python before, maybe maybe that's not a big problem. But but we, we, we really suggest that you do use the virtual environment now. Otherwise, we may have troubles that are not really the scope of this uh, workshop to address. Right. So we're, we're just using the virtual yeah. environment to make sure we have a smooth experience in this workshop. 
I would even suggest as a general practice to use the virtual environment because when you are dealing with many projects, even being them from fund projects, each project could have some difference from the production point of view. And um, maybe you will need some dependency or uh, yes, like tool from for one of them, but another one for another project. So it's it keeps really clean uh, to ensure that you are working in a virtual environment for each project. And at the same time, there is a common practice to um, to have these requirements file where you append all the um, tools and dependencies that your project requires. So you can have also that a specific requirements text file uh, related to your to each of your projects. And at the same time, um, it's, it's safe in general to work in a virtual environment. And especially if you are beginning with this, you will be more comfortable about you are sure that you are not going to mess with your operative system. So yes, I would recommend that. There's okay. in the extreme case, you can just um, delete the virtual environment and just yes. load it again, and everything exactly. is fine and your computer is still working. Yeah, that's, it's that's better, better, better than formatting aspect. your computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. But okay, so I, I, would suggest, I would suggest that everybody uh, open the text, text terminal and type, uh, go to a, a, a directory where you want to work, M maybe create an empty directory and go into that so that you you work from there uh and then you run this command python 3 dash m vm space vm and at the same time uh are you familiar with uh, terminal with typing commands in terminal and everything this is a question for all the participants you can reply in the chat Okay. 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 Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> All right. It was worth asking. <laughs> yeah, we, we have some people who are not comfortable. Uh, if you have any any question on how to do that, please uh, post in the QA uh, chat and we can help you. Uh, if, if anybody has uh, a need to a closer uh, help, we may be able to open a separate room for troubleshooting. Uh, but of course, uh, we are just three of us here, so we are limited resources. So, <laughs> so if you really need help, we, we can open a separate room and take a look at what's going on and try to address troubleshoot. Uh, oh, and also Miracle can help us. So there's four of us here. So one of us has to yeah. stay here and the three of us may be available to help. Um, yeah. So after we run that command, then there will be a, a new directory called VM that is created. And this directory is the virtual environment. And you have to activate it to make it work. You just type source vn slash bin slash activate. And after you run that command, then you are inside the virtual environment. And whatever you do uh, is only going to apply to that virtual environment. Whatever you do with Python. Uh, regarding to Python. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hmm. And after running that, you can install the tool with with this command pip3 install font bakery and basically that command will download font bakery from a public server where it is available so you, you have to have access to the internet but you clearly have it right now <laughs> And then it will download it. And it will also download all of the dependencies. So everything that is necessary for for Font Bakery will also be downloaded and installed automatically. 
And maybe we should post the sequence of three commands into the chat so that people can can have access to it. I could also, it will depend if they want to try it themselves or I could also share my screen and run the process for a project. Okay. Mm. Whatever. Let me just. Ah. I, I will post the message. Mirko was added on. as a presenter. So welcome, Mirko. Source the end. In plus activate. And then Petri install from Petri. Okay, so I posted three messages to the chat. Uh, with the three commands, if you need to copy and paste them, or if you need to take a look at them after we change Also, slides. if you want to share your screen, please tell us, and we could. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As as we're we're in a workshop, we 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 may share the screen of an attendee so that everybody can see what's going on, or we can do that in a separate room as well. Should also maybe mention that Justin the Penner is saying that that was odd. Usually only takes a few seconds, it took about a minute. I'm not sure about what process are you talking uh, about? The installation? Uh, to create the event. Mm. Uh. Yes, if you can share the process, it will be great. I will share it now then. I'm going to share my screen. And also before I share my screen, uh, I can see that there are a few attendees that maybe are Spanish speakers. If you want to have a separate room for us to talk in Spanish, I could do that also. Or even in German or Portuguese. Or Portuguese, yeah. I speak Portuguese, Viviana speaks Spanish, and Lassie speaks German. My computer is really, really slow. I think it's because of the video we are yeah. sharing and everything. So I'm going to do this again. Are you seeing it already? Yes. But we okay, need I'm a larger in... font size, please. OK. Better? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, OK. So <laughs> we, we have a funny comment. Uh, Felipe Negrão, which I think is Brazilian as well, uh, is saying that uh, there are three Felipe's in this room that speak Portuguese here. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Maybe someone from Portugal as well. So once you are in your project, I will suggest to create your event in your project, as I told before, uh, as I told you before. And here you run the command title three. I'm on terminal, as you can see, and then this is the basic command. And yes, I think it's going to take a while because of the video. <laughs> That's maybe why it was slow. Yes, I always like to hit the ls command to see that my vein was actually created. And then I will activate it. And in it's worth uh, to mention that on uh, Windows, activation looks differently. If there's anyone on, on Windows. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a really we, uh, good clarification. How do you know that you have activated it? Because it has this 
message or this flag at the beginning of your line in the command line before your user. And once you are sure that you are there, you run the pip tree install from the query command. Oh, sorry, I missed one. Yeah, I have a typo. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, that could happen. Pip tree install from bakery. It's all good now, I think. So this is going to be the process. There's a it's question. Not, uh, it's not, sorry, it's not that slow. Usually it's because of the video. You were saying there is a question? Uh, some people may be confused about why do we have VNs twice in that command line. Uh, the first VN in that command oh. line is the name of the Python module that creates a virtual environment for us. Mm -hmm. And the second VN could be anything. Uh, it's the name of your virtual environment. We're just using a generic VN name, but it could be my 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 phone project, and that, that would be the name of your virtual environment. It could be anything. Uh, yeah. And also, someone asked whether do we have to install the library every time we create the virtual environment. Uh, if you create a new virtual environment, it will be empty. Uh, it will only have the basic Python uh, setup. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you will have to install it, yeah. But once you have created a virtual environment and install it, then it will be available in there uh, for any time you want to use it. So, so if, if if in the future you 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 turn off your computer, you turn it on again, and you want to continue working, you have to reactivate that virtual environment that you created to continue working in there. Uh, but to activate is just the activate command. Not you don't have to create it. You don't have to install anything once more. So at the end of the process, you receive this message of what was installed. As you can see, it installed uh, many uh, dependencies or tools needed. Uh, and and I'm just receiving this warning because I have a, an older version of, of PIP, but it's not important in this moment. Um, so yes, once you have it, you're still in your virtual environment. And now you can go to fonts and repeat the process I did before. I'm going, this project has a lot of, uh, yes, this is a case with many, many, many fonts inside, but again, you could just choose to run it in in one of the of the fonts i'm going to try i don't know it by memory felipe do you can you share me the the sub command for i don't know open type maybe we could try it just, just check open type yeah it's not any anything fancy here i don't know okay I'm going to do it in the regular form. And of course, I'm going to create my mark down. Um, report. This is uh, some, there are some other options that you can add to the, because the basic command will be this. But doing this, you are not going to receive one or to export the program is not going to export the markdown report. It is only going to show it here in your terminal. But I always want to have my markdown file. So I always append this option. Uh, I'm going to do that, that. And this is it. Oh, in this case, I have a cupcake. 
So I think this project is almost ready to go. So yes, that will be the process. Do you feel more comfortable to try by your own? I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, uh, Justin Penner uh, mentioned that there's also a deactivate command that you can use to get out of the virtual environment. Yeah. It may be useful. Yeah, but I stop sharing if you want to share or should I? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's get back to the... Yeah. What is that? Uh, Okay. Would any of you would like to share your screen so we can accompany you? <laughs> we have some some basic tips for usage. Mm, so yes. if if you type form page dash h or double dash help, these both of these commands are the same. Uh, they're equivalent. Uh, you can have a a help message telling you how to use the program. Um, that's very, very common for common line programs to have the dash H or dash dash help option so that you can figure out things by yourself. Uh, but then some examples, uh, you can run from bakery, some sub common and some font. And one of the sub commons is check Google fonts or check open type or check universal for the specific profiles like this for running checks on a phone family uh, with the Google phones profile or like this. If you want to get, if you want to filter only the fail messages, then, then you can run it like this. Oh, sorry, like this. Um, so you use the dash dash log level fail and you will only get the fail log results. You could do that for all sorts of at different levels as well. And if let's suppose that you have one specific check that you want to ensure that your font is not failing, you can use that check ID that I showed you, uh, that com.google.fonts com slash check slash something. That check ID is the name of the check, right? You can you can pass it on the common line. So the from bakery will only run that specific check. Uh, or if you want to run only a couple of checks, you can pass this a couple of times, and only those will be executed. And this is in general useful when you want to get like an entire collection and run for many 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 fonts uh, just one check across a collection. You can use that, and that's very useful. Uh, Aaron also made another comment that it's really helpful. He says it can feel a little repetitive, repetitive, sorry, but especially in cases where you use a build script to generate your fonts, preserving the font tools version can be really valuable as otherwise code changes and breaks your process. Oh yeah, I think he's referring to the usage of a virtual environment for having oh, yeah. a specific mm -hmm. version. Yeah. yeah, I'm just yeah. checking the message and yeah, sharing that's really to everyone. Useful. That's really useful, indeed. So uh, Salome has uh, remarked that um, font value is empty. Um, this means you didn't give Font Bakery uh, fonts that it should check. So I don't know um, what you entered, but it doesn't find any font files. Yeah, maybe you have a typo in the font file name you passed, or or are you you even didn't pass at all any any font files in the command line? You would like to share the screen? Maybe we can help you to check. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Okay, uh, so his um, Salome is saying uh, that the command line used was font bakery check open type diesel regular dot OTF. Uh, this should work as long as diesel regular OTF is a file that is placed in the exact same directory where you are right now. So uh, whenever you open your terminal, uh, the default directory you're working from is your home folder, your the base user directory. Um, so if your phone is there, then it will find it. Otherwise, maybe maybe you have to pass explicitly the full path, uh, the full directory path. To oh, all the, all the relative uh, like the path to find the phone. If it's mm -hmm. the same, the yeah. directory. Either, either relative or absolute, but you have to provide a correct path. Um, Sina is looking good, by the way. That's yeah. Kind of, that's the result you want to see. Like not the fails, but yeah. It ran. Sina has nine fails to address <laughs> and six True. more to think about. True also, Aaron. You can also, instead of typing the name of the file, you can drag the phone into the terminal and then just run the command. Oh, yes. That's really good. Mm -hmm. because I, think, I think the text terminal automatically writes the correct path when you drop, right? When you drop a file in there. Okay, Salami, do you want to share the screen? I think you are allowed to do it now. We, we can allow, uh, we are able to if, if needed. Yeah, but Sai already did it. Okay, okay. I'm trying to catch up with the messages with the in the chat. The invitation. We can also uh, let you speak, Salome. Yes. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, so I, I drag, drop the uh, the file, um, but then this pass arrow is coming. What does that mean? I don't know. I think, oh, okay, wait. I, I think I got it. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> beginning of the line is, is bad. Can just try to press the up keys actually. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, it works. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Cool. Awesome, that was and no fails. Uh, oh, oh, but oh. when you're running the open type, do you have no fails for open type? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Got a <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> At least not fails. Uh, one thing is that actually, although worms are not like required, it's just as as it says a warning. Mm -hmm. It's a good one because I have been able to catch some uh, errors in paths or um, some interpolation issues that was uh, resulting in, for example, there is a check that um, inspects or check the eclipse according to the uh, number of paths expected mm -hmm. on it. For example, if you have uh, the number one, you will expect just only one path, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you are receiving that you have three paths there, maybe, maybe, unless it is something out of the design, maybe you have some error in the interpolation. So to check the ones is also a good practice. Okay, fine, cool. Mm -hmm. Thank let me you. suggest uh, before you turn off your screen sharing. Yeah. Uh, let me suggest you you may try running uh, check universal instead of check open type, yeah. so that you also have these uh, more uh, universally accepted uh, 
good practices that are beyond the open type spec. So you, you can just rerun the command, but typing okay. check universal instead of check open type. I, I think you will have to use your oh, cursor, right. cursor. Oh, okay. Yes. So instead of open type, I'll just write universal. Yeah, check dash universal. That's yeah, that's it. And just press enter. It's okay. Oh, I don't have to go to the end. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got two fails. Yeah. Okay, so take a look at the fails and let's see if that makes sense. Uh, um, what one of the things that we like doing is getting feedback from users by mm -hmm. by having the users read a fail message and tell us this doesn't make any sense to me let, let, or this could be better and then we can improve so that, that that's the point when when we say we we are an open uh, collaborative project uh, is that we get feedback from the users yeah okay uh what is this? This means like the uh, when asked and uh, value should be equal to zero. So re read the text in the this gray, one? In the gray yeah. box because that explains what we know about it. So I think this means uh, the position of the accents uh, above and below the uh, the glyph. I'm guessing. Where are you? Uh, in Sorry, this is the, in the rational over here. This mm -hmm. top box. The rational says that a font's win ascent and win descent values should be greater than the head tables ymax and absolute y minimum values. If they are less than these values, there may be clipping on Windows platforms. So portions of your clip may not render properly on Windows if oh. you do not do it that way. Okay. Uh, if the font includes tall, deep writing systems such as Arabic or Vanagari, the Win Ascent and Win Descent uh can be greater than uh to accommodate for vowel marks da, da, da. Oh. Yeah. so yeah so th there are, there are things that I, I gotta be honest with you uh i am personally not very familiar with but uh wh whoever implemented that check provided that kind of information okay. and yeah. it, it, it seems to refer to a real problem uh, maybe only on legacy platforms, maybe only on old, older versions of Windows, perhaps. Yeah. And there's even a reference to an issue where the problem is actually discussed probably in much more detail. Uh, if there's anybody in this room who knows more about this kind of problem and would like to help us improve this, uh, we would be re really glad. And, th and that's the point when we say it's collaborative. If anybody knows more about this, we will be glad to have more feedback. Um, if we are still talking about the wind accent and wind descent, yeah, the basic information is what Felipe said, that mm -hmm. usually these values on your, uh, in, in your, when you're setting those in the, your info, in your yeah. editor, your font info, you have to assign uh, the, values for wing ascent and wind descent according to the maximum values in the BB Oaks. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That is not the same value as the UPN. You can have a font designed in 1000 UPN, but this, the, your highest value on uh, your BB Oaks, because maybe you are designing something with Vietnamese and you have a stock, uh, stock <laughs> their critics, you will have a, a value higher than that um, to the uh, Ymax 
and also to do why mean if you have you are having diacritics that from below your letters. So those are the values that you need to set in your phone info to avoid them to be clipped in in Windows. And uh, what is great about the tool is it they it is not only warning you about that, but it is giving you the actual values that you need to to add in your phone info because yeah. it has some kind of maybe Felipe can correct me, but it measures and it runs through all of your glyphs and measures which is the highest value and the lower value and it returns that to you. If okay. if if I remember correctly, I think that the implementation of this check basically goes through all of the glyphs and calculates the bounding box of all of them and gets the maximum value of them all. And that that's why it's saying that it diverges. Uh, you yeah. expected to have a value, but it got a different one in your font. So it's suggesting what you should put in there. So it's also possible, right, that you have just some diacritics or some like air, like glyphs in your font that are way too tall that you yeah. have neglected to like fix. And since it's grabbing that bounding box, well, everything else seems to be working fine. So it's it's also like one of those things where you have to look through and find something that's that tall. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if, if you found that and it was too tall, then you'd say, oh, okay, that's what's causing the fail. And if you deleted that and then rebuilt your font and it wasn't giving you that fail anymore, you'd know that that was the, that was the yeah. end of the issue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As that is uh, also, uh, although you run the universal mm -hmm. profile, didn't you? Yeah, this is the universal yeah. one. Yeah. You can see there that although it, you're, despite it was the universal profile, you have this ID that marks it as a Google profile check. And it is because in for Google, in within the Google context, we have uh, some specifications about what we are expecting to, or how we are expecting to handle the vertical metrics. Uh, Aaron even shared the specification in the chat. Thanks, Aaron. But Actually, this is a big area of the debate and discussion in general in type design. We have set those specifications according to our needs for fonts to display way uh, well in the browsers and web fonts. Um, but you can find a lot of discussions. Maybe if you are not, if you are planning just to have your fonts well designed, it's a good topic to read more about mm -hmm. and to decide what, whether, how do you want to uh, manage it. But this about win accent and win descent is included in the universal because it's a universal, it's, despite it is a Google phone check, it is universal. This about, particularly about win accent and win descent, the win metrics, the Windows metrics is universal. You want to avoid clipping in Windows. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yes, you're more than welcome. Will anybody else want to share your a screen? Um, I would like or, to share. I, I would like to share my screen so that I can show you um, what to do if you want to collaborate with Font Paper. Uh, so, in this conversation we we're having right now. There's some feedback that we're getting in the chat uh, and in this video discussion. And I would like to showcase how do we make these proposals public in our issue tracker so that people can get used to that as well if they want to collaborate. Um, sorry, uh, Felipe, Aaron has a question now that we are talking about win accent and mm -hmm. with um, let me see. Um, the question is regarding whether or not the box drawing characters are included. Uh -huh. uh, probably, yeah, uh, everything is included. Uh, so the check is just doing a generic overall calculation. Uh, if you have a specific different criteria, then probably you have to use your judgment to 
maybe mm -hmm. ignore the check result because you know that you have something different than yeah. you thought. Uh, so uh, you got to remember this is an automated tool and sometimes we have different criteria than the automation. But that could be an issue too, right? Like if you were interested in, in including a check like that for um, specifically uh, a font that has a lot of like big boxy characters that don't follow the same rules as the rest of the font's vertical metrics, that's something you could write an issue about and like make a more specific check for yeah, it, correct? Right? Like, yeah, like that's, that's a scenario in which you would probably want to make your own custom profile with checks like this one because you have you have different criteria so you you may just make a custom profile that inherits everything from a base profile but but provides a different implementation for that one or drops that one and provides a similar one with a different logic yeah so yeah let, let me take a let, let me take let, let let me show you an example of how to provide feedback for the project. I will share my screen. Let me see. Um, is it apps? That's for sure. Okay. Okay. And here we have GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash Google Fonts slash Font uh, are, are you seeing my screen already? Yes. OK. So here, here is the GitHub page for the Font Paper project. That, that's the GitHub is like a social network for software development. Uh, and that's the page where the software is hosted the source code and we have these issues tab here if you click on issues you can see there's a list of issues that people have posted here so these are problems with the tool or these are proposals of improvements to the tool so for instance um uh so, some somebody here uh, dave crossland uh posted an issue, which is a new check proposal. So he's suggesting that we should have a new check. And if you click here, you can see the description of the check. So he's basically saying that uh, there's there's an issue on the Amstelvar typeface a project that reports a number of encoding issues. We should have checks for them, or better, checks that catch those and more of their nature. So it, this is like a broad message from Dave. It could it could provide much more detail, but anyway, it points to a, another issue in a specific form project that we could take a look and see is is that a way for us to automate that kind of detection? But uh, you you can also post issues like this one. Um, so let's just create a new issue. Yep, click on new issue. And then a title. Uh, so improve uh, rational text for uh, com.google.fonts slash check slash win. What, what's the name of the check? Uh, win ascent. I don't remember the name of the check. Uh, I think it was Google Fonts. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, Fontbakery.com. Fontbakery.com, you have the documentation for the project. And in the documentation for the project, you have a list of checks. And on the list of checks, you have them separated by profiles. And if, if we go to the universal profile, we have the list of those, and, and this is the one. Uh, Google Fonts, Chat, Family, Win, Ascend, and Descent. I think that's it. Yeah, 
that's it. Uh, and so here. <laughs> and there, there's a template here that you should try to fill up if you're posting an issue. You take a look. Um, in general, we expect to have a description of the, the problem you're having uh, and what you expected to see instead, and maybe some files or any other resources we may need to have access to in order to replicate the problem you're having. So, but in this case, I'll just delete everything and just mention we are in a workshop at 8 Pi, and people have feedback. And people suggested, and I'll just paste here the messages that people suggested, right? But then whenever you, you, you write what you have, you can just submit the issue, and this will be registered in the platform so that I will see it, everybody will see it. Uh, not, not only the team members, but anybody in the world can see this. And then anybody in the world who may be interested in addressing this can help in the development of the project. But typically, we would take a look at it. And if possible, if we have the resources and time to do it, we, we would try to address the issues in whatever priority we are able to address it. Right. Uh, so if we go to the platform, back to the platform, where is it? What was the feedback? Uh, let me wow. see. Some people said here something. Did everyone manage to run the, the checks? Any profile? Or are you one, some of you experience some problems or? Now, now I'm trying to find the messages that I saw a while ago here, uh, where people were giving feedback. <laughs> uh... Yes, you don't have to use the upgrade argument when you are creating the virtual environment for the first time. But as Pom Bakery uh, has some releases from time to time, it's probably each two months, two weeks or monthly, Felipe, that you upgrade from Bakery or you release a new version? Uh, you can use, you can do pip install upgrade, yeah. Yeah, but how how frequently do you? Um, we do we do have at least once per month. Yeah. But sometimes once per week. It depends on the amount of work we've done. Uh, if 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 we have a critical fix then we, we may just release one day after the previous one, if we need to. But, uh, but in general, we do it like every, every couple of weeks or maybe once a month. Yes. So in that case, if you want to be sure that you have the latest release, uh, you, you, in that case, you use the upgrade argument. Yeah, verify. Uh, your tallest uh, diacritics. They may be too tall. Or something like that. Oh, this is just one proposal that I think I understood from one of the attendees that we could just say verify your tallest diacritics. They may be too tall. Right. Or maybe too low, right? But I'll just post this as an example. And then now we have an issue, and there's an issue number, the issue number 3071. So you can see we've been working a lot here. <laughs> 3000 issues. Um, we address most of those. Uh, there's still three, 359 that we did not address. The rest is all addressed. Um, yeah, so there's a comment here. And we may have a conversation here. For, for any issue that you open on GitHub, you can post more messages. This basically becomes uh, like a small, a dedicated chat session to discuss just this specific problem. 
So if anybody has any comments to make, I would just post the link to this one and you can provide further feedback by, by just writing there. I'll just posting, I'm just posting this on the chat. So you got a URL, you can visit that website and post more, more messages there. Of course, you will have to create a user account on GitHub in order to post, but that's straightforward. Uh, have you found any other fail or worm that you don't understand or you want to clarify or something? Please give us feedback. <laughs> we want to help you in every way I, we can. Maybe you could go through a typical fail that uh, is fixed by like the GF tools suite because there are so many things that, uh, like for example, I, I find that like maybe a good example would be showing like a font without a desig table and then just flopping in a uh, like fixed desig command to show that works. Uh, two questions before that. Uh, Salami is asking, so we just have to upgrade P3 or upgrade from Bakery as well in the terminal for the latest version. I will say that only from Bakery, unless you are sure that you want to have the latest version of Python for any reason, you don't need to upgrade Python as well. Uh, you just need to upgrade the fun bakery. But again, unless you know that you need the latest version of Python for any other reason, you should do that. Uh, I hope I, I was clear <laughs> enough. And Ricardo, uh, that warning regards on your version of FIP, uh, it's not really alarming. You, if you want to upgrade your PIP version, you should run that command. But you are only behind, a little bit behind. Yeah, I think you're getting an older version of PIP because PIP comes, um, I think, with the Python interpreter. Mm -hmm. So that's. I mean, that could be a source of errors, but usually those minor version changes don't um, do not do much. So I, I do often ignore this. Sometimes exactly. sometimes I get bored by, by reading that warning and I install it, but never experienced it. Really. Yeah, I only upgrade it if it's a really old version. If I'm running something like 18 and their current version is 20, I will do that. Yeah, because pip, pip is the tool that installs packages mm -hmm. for you. So if it's running and it's working, there's no problem. Uh, if there is a newer version, clearly they did something to it. They may have fixed some bugs, but maybe those bugs are not affecting you. So it's typically small things, small details, not something to worry a lot. It, it's always good to have the latest version of software but it's not necessarily a critical thing. DZIG, um, Salomi is asking what DZIG is. It's a digital signature table in the front. Mm. It's, it was, I mean, nobody uses it actually, that it was kind of blended in the spec. And the idea is that you can sign your software and make sure, that, or in this case, your front software, and make sure that uh, the software is coming from the one who signed. So that's um, cryptographic um, signing, actually. But I think it was just always too uh, complicated to because in order to be able to sign, someone has to 
has to sign your signature, basically. Stuff like that. So uh, nobody uses it, actually, but some versions of, uh, I think, Word needed it to just to be present, not to be actually signed to I, make yeah. the entire mm -hmm. work properly. I've, I've never seen it myself, but I heard that some older versions of Word would refuse to load the font if it was not signed. So mm -hmm. if you are creating the font file to a large audience that may have, that, that may be using an older version of Word, you may want to have that dummy fake, fake digital signature just to make that old version of Word happy and load the phone correctly. So this just increases the public that is able to benefit from using your font by just making a fake table. But otherwise, it's something that should not be too much of a problem nowadays. Yeah. For that and some other fails, as, Mer as Merkel mentioned in the chat, we use uh, the GF tools. <laughs> Uh, that are very, very helpful to solve that type of things, for example. Uh, Sai says, Felipe is correct that I wouldn't add it unless a specific customer asked for it. Yeah, that's a different policy. Uh, I, I think that for Google Fonts, we do we do add it just to be safe. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, you, your, your type foundry could have a different uh, approach to the same problem. Mm -hmm. uh, how else is everybody else going? How many fails did you receive? Or does someone need a breakout mm -hmm. room for more specific help that should not be discussed in the broader forum here? Six. Huh. I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm happy because you are receiving on a small amount of fails. <laughs> uh, at the beginning, I forgot to warn you that uh, you could receive many of them uh, as part of the first time. So six are, is a good number. Uh, I think I think because you're used to run the uh, Google Fonts profile, yeah, there's so probably. much specific yeah. stuff that can go wrong. I have received 80 tails in some projects. <laughs> oh, that's a really, really good question from Felipe. Felipe Negro. Yes. Uh, he's asking whether we can check native Glyphs app files or UFOs. And I mean, do I need to generate the font even early in the process? So nowadays, Font Bakery is running checks on binaries. And um, it could in the future. We, we, we have been considering the possibility of doing so, but we haven't. But maybe in the future, we, we may have uh, checks for glyphs app files. Well, there, there is even a profile for UFO files. There, there is. There, there are a few, but not just much a, content. Yeah, <laughs> just a little, just just some checks for UFOs, but not not as broad a uh, set of checks as we have for binaries. And uh, yeah, we we may have in the future checks for glyphs apps, but. One one of the things that I am concerned is that I do not want to make Font Bakery um, biased towards a specific uh, font editor, and and I don't I also don't want to make Font Bakery biased toward a specific vendor. So even though uh, we we got funding from Google to develop it, and of course we work a lot on the Google Fonts profile. Uh, we try to make the tool generic. Uh, so if, if you are running a different profile, uh, a, diff a different uh, foundry with different uh, uh, criteria, you, you can run the tool just, just as well. So we try not to make it biased. And, and in terms of the Glyphs app, 
if we made checks for GlyphSap, then why, why wouldn't we make checks for FontLab and so on? And there's so many different files, file formats for font projects that we could use. So maybe we could use an abstraction layer that some people have suggested it could be possible to do. We're not sure it's really easy, but uh, Simon Cousins has been working on an abstraction layer for file formats that we might someday use so that we could have the logic for checking at the source, source files level. Uh, but nowadays, no. Nowadays, you have to build the files and then and then run the checks. So and for, it, sorry, sorry. Yeah, in general, it is possible to implement these things. There's nothing like in Font Bakery that stops you from from creating a profile that checks close files. It's just that we didn't do it yet. Yeah. Uh, so for now, you will have to compile the files. Yeah. And, and uh, it, sorry, just just one more thing. Uh, it's it's it, it may it may sound cumbersome to build the fonts all the time to run the checks, and it indeed it is. Uh, but you can have automation of that as well. So there are some systems such as uh, as I told in the slides, uh, continuous integration systems that were originally built for software development, but you could use that for font development as well. Uh, so a very popular one is Travis, traviscicom uh, and it is uh, well integrated into GitHub. So if you host your form files on a GitHub uh, repository, you can set up the continuous integration services on Travis so that whenever you push uh, some commits with uh, modifications to your Font project, uh, the the Travis servers will automatically grab that copy of the newer newer version of your repository, and automatically run a script. And then in that script, you can set up Font Bakery, you can set up Font Make to build from glyphs into like it converts from glyphs to UFO, and then it builds UFO into font binaries, and then those TT apps. You can run Font Bakery on top of that, and then generate a uh, like a log, and you can see whether it passed or not. So th there's some automation that can be done, and we've been doing that kind of stuff with Google, but there there's been people outside of Google Fonts also using that kind of automation. I, I think that Adobe has been doing that as well, but n not necessarily with Travis. I think they use their own internal infrastructure for that. But uh, anyway, uh, continuous integration is something that is possible. And then it's not, it's not so cumbersome because you don't have to manually build your fonts. The system will do it automatically for you and it will send you an email whenever something went wrong. And then you can take a look at what, what's wrong. You know? I would like you to try the log level. Um, command to filter the level of the results. Uh, remember, it is the same as you used to before, but you have to add the log level flag. At the end, if you want to filter just by fail, it, that's the one, or warrant, or any other. Um, so you can see a very different report. A uh, shorter one, a brief one. Right you what? want to share your screen with this? Yes, please. Don't be shy. No, I mean, I mean with the log levels because you yeah. Ah, for, do you want me to share the screen? I'm going to do it. It's just easier to. OK. Let me go to my. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yes, it must be in uppercase. Uh, 
uh, if you if you type it in lowercase, I think that might be the case. Uh -huh. So are you seeing my screen already? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. So here I am in my bump project again. Ah. I want to check. I'm going to activate my virtual environment. Once I do that, I will go to my phone folder. Um, yes. The first uh, time I did this with the open type specification on the regular phone. I'm going to try the Google phone. So we are going to see now a very different result, maybe, probably. Uh, um, so I used to do it right here. I add my log level. I want a brief report, so I only, I'm only i only interested in warrant on tails or probably errors. Uh, then I add my iPhone and then I also add my command for my markdown report. I think it's important to say here that the log level uh, specifies that or worse. So you will get mm -hmm. warnings or anything worse than a warning. Mm -hmm. So okay. you get warnings, fails, and errors, but you do not get in full skip and pass. So it's it's a threshold that is specified. So to produce a lot of um, output, you could maybe show us the log level deeper. Yeah, uh, that just to is a big difference. What Justin Penner, Justin Penner asked about the fail being case sensitive. Yeah, you have to you have to type it uppercase. So, as I don't know if you remember, but when I run the open type profile, I receive my cupcake. In this case, I'm receiving one fail. It is st still a clean a clean project with just one thing. I'm not having too much fun, <laughs> too much fun here. Uh, in this case, uh, it is um, a fail regarding hinting. Uh, so maybe I'm going to open my folder here. Oh, that my computer is really slow. Dun, dun, dun. Um, Python 3.7 is good enough for running from paper. Uh, if, even though it may, there, there may be newer versions of Python, uh, 3.7 is enough. Uh, you shouldn't have problems using 3.7. No, this is not good. This is it. Yes. It is complaining about PPEM. Uh, that must have this flat bit three set. And to solve that, I usually do this good GF tool fix hinting. And that is also, as you can see, one big way Ooh. to solve it. <laughs> when you are you suggest to create a virtual environment, if you already have one, you don't have to do a new <laughs> one. <laughs> and if you are in a, you have activated it, as I am here, yeah. I could install this GF tool speed install 
and then run this get to fix hinting command uh, to solve that. But this is particularly uh, a check included in the Google Form profile because, as I said, it includes many checks to a better perform of the fonts in web on browsers and everything. So please try it, try the flag. I'm going to show it again here. And let us know what do you receive? Get the um, there's there's also something I did not mention, but you probably noticed already, is that Fontecri is much more concerned about uh, technical uh, font engineering problems rather than design aspects of the font project. So the quality of your design should be assessed by a human being looking at the at the font design and evaluating it. So the, the tool is more focused on the metadata and the technical font engineering aspects of a project. So there was a question um, in the chat just, about, just um, I think, uh, Oops, sorry. Okay, Justin. Oh, go ahead. What's happening? Okay, Justin is asking if there's a vertical matrix um, fix. I don't think we have a hot fix for this, but I think there is actually a glyphs script that Mark used to maintain to do this kind of thing. I can look at it. Maybe I can find it. So only working if yeah. you use with glyphs. I think you're right, Loss, and Mark has a fixed vertical metric script in glyphs, but I don't know how. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I would recommend to manage uh, in a very conscious and um, I, I just leave the fix tool uh, if you're really sure what you are, uh, what do you want, if you have already taste the values for your vertical metrics because I'm going to show you here or maybe I could share my screen again. It is an important kind of important decision when you are uh, making your phone because you want to uh, I'm going to open this issue. Uh, vertical metrics are also or mainly important to set the line height of your font when it is not a line height or leading applied in the design when you are using the font. So I'm going to share you one issue that we had in one project at some point and here you can see it is a project that is based on a previous font. The previous font is the this this first one, the monospace font, and the current project was the proportional version of that font. So at the beginning, he has this uh, line height uh, measure, or this was the line height of the font. This uh, and it was too tight the lines were like collapsing between one another and you want to control that. So maybe once you have done this and uh, for web fonts, uh, common practices com to compare your phone against more common used fonts in, in web. 
so you can see which the is the average i think i think from the user's point of view and you can check your phone and decide what do you want for it uh, this phone after we did that even has this other issue reported i'm going to share please be patient with the velocity of my computer today um let me shrink this window so probably for some of you this is already known but i'm trying to give some perfect perspective in general a uh, user on that same project report this and i have seen that curiously at least for my point of view uh, developers or web developers are the the more experienced users i think or at least the more demanding when regards of some of these uh, aspects he was complaining about the latest version of the phone didn't have this line high balance and it is important because when you are developing uh, some web page you want to have this settled to just create for example your buttons on your web page and the text is going to be centered so you don't want to have this situation and this was also uh, fixed in the project uh, okay, no I think you have your micro open. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So basically when I I went I want to say or I'm trying to say here is yes, although it is a fixed a vertical matrix fixed tool, it is better if you control that first and once you are sure you want, what do you want, and you're receiving a fail, then you can try to run it to solve the situation. Okay, Aaron is saying that in the build script of Cascadia, 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 I overwrite all of the font vertical metrics, helps align everything. Yeah. Yeah, as I said, if you are sure what do you want to do, yes, do it. But I would not recommend the fix tool uh, if you are starting with your design or in type design. Or ignore if if you are not if you are comfortable that is not breaking anything in testing. Yes, miracle, one, you are right. One one, one important um thing we got kind of from um we learned the hard way is that um, these hot fixes that are like repairing your final two type fonts um can be very problematic if if you don't for example tool them in your build script. So if you just uh, always apply the scripts um, again and again and again, mm -hmm. this information will be lost at some point. So we always prefer basically to fix stuff in the sources if possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, because then uh, downstream it, it will be just already included. So hot fixing is, is can be very difficult in some cases. Actually, Front Bakery initially had hot fixing routines in the very beginning and we decided to get rid of those because first of all we wanted to focus on making one tool that worked well for one specific purpose so we just focused on checking and reporting instead of fixing uh, but then there's this problem as well that hot fixing binaries is not really sustainable uh, so Nowadays, that Font Bakery is a more mature, more well well developed project. We we consider re, uh, reincorporating fixing routines, but probably we would try to do that at the source level, 
maybe adding automated fixes to Blipsap files, but it, it's tricky. It's tricky because uh, in general, if, you, if your tool automatically changes files, maybe, maybe the user can get confused about what's going on, and maybe the proper way of fixing would be fixing one thing at a time instead of fixing many things at once. It would just be a mess if you if you perform lots of fixes at once at the source files. So it, it's tricky. We're not sure we'll have it, but we have considered that. I always prefer to fix as many things as possible. They're directly on the sources. I I'm particularly interested in uh, having this source file ready for anyone, particularly in the open source community, when you know that maybe not you, but other person is going to add or improve something in the phone later. Uh, for me, it's better to have the source file as strong as possible so the other person can work on it in a clean way and it's not going to depend on understanding the build script and the, all the fixes and hot fixes that uh, I think Marco can elaborate later that idea better, uh, unless you are doing that in the chat. Uh, I think so. But yes, I would prefer to do that in the build. At the same time, Justin has had this question about why they should be the same uh, when you have different metrics for light to bolt, because you want to them to behave like as a family. So if you are setting or composing some text, maybe in the regular and you change some part of it to bold or to light, you are not going to have this jump or incompatibility in the vertical but metrics. On a, on a like going from light to bold, on like an X height level, that X height might shift, mm -hmm. right? It probably should. Mm -hmm. but if you can imagine if the rectangle surrounding everything changes, your line height is going to shift exactly. when you go from light to bold. And that um, could be kind of uh, really, really bad. If you imagine trying to um, set something at the same point size, but it's yeah, it, it, it will, <laughs> you won't be able to set your lines uh, evenly. It's probably the easiest way to put it. And then on the hotfix um, question, Viviana, uh, basically, like, the, the idea of, like, fixing in source is that every single time you output another font binary, um, you can expect the same things to happen without having to apply patches to it. Mm -hmm. so, like. It'd be like making the same pair of pants over and over and over again versus you make a pair of pants and then you add all these like details to it. You might lose one of those details going forward. So you want to make sure that you fix as many things in the original um, as possible. Yeah. Aaron is pointing that one challenge is that sometimes the source file can support what you might want to do. For example, Glyphs does not support the way I want to set the gas table that's also true but those are like the exceptions uh, but you don't want also to be hot fixing every little detail that's what i say as many as you can fix in the source file it's a better practice and then if you want to fix some particular specific things like that one which is very specialized, yes, you can do it in that TTX maybe or with some fixed script or something. I would mention that uh, another example is the digital signature table that as, as far as I can tell, there's no way to automatically place an empty fake DSIG into a phone project binary uh, by, by editing the glyphs sources. I think, I think glyphs does not do it. Uh, so you have to hot fix it if you want to fix that. Sure. Or, right. For any table. Like, a, any, like stat tables, for example, like is a, is a, is a post-processing thing. But I think the point is that like you want to build a very solid foundation. And then once you have your foundation, 
all of those things that are sort of like bleeding edge or cutting edge that you have to at this time fix in. I mean, then it becomes your responsibility as like a, a font developer, a type designer to bring those things up to the people maintaining the the source software that you're using in order to to implement those features. So that oh, yeah. you right? Yeah. So you can have cleaner builds. And okay. that, that's why that's why I also like to I, I also prefer to use a font make to build binaries yeah. in an automated fashion instead of using the the graphical using face of glyphs to click a button to generate binaries. So whenever you can have a compiler that is like common line automate uh, uh, possible to automate, you know, it's better because then the project becomes not only the glyphs file, but also the the the, the build script. And then you actually have a build system, like a script file that runs font make to generate the the binaries, and then apply the fixes with GF tools, and 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 so it's it's possible to replicate replicate that precisely. Okay, Ali has a question on how to run the font bakery on a set of on many fonts on an entire family. So I'm going to share my screen. That was. Yeah. A, good one that we were missing <laughs> so mm -hmm. and it's only a stop because maybe we should clarify later what is for make um, and that, that that's that's one of the examples in the slides uh, you use the wild card mm -hmm. yeah. yes there in the slide are the command that i'm going to run it here mm -hmm. so again for I'm going to check uh, Google Fonts. I like that because it's one of... You missed the Y. Yeah. Um, it brings more complex <laughs> complexity to the trick. I'm going to apply the log level filter. And then here, as you can see, I'm this Barlow project has like three subfamilies, the barlow, the barlow condensed, and the semi-condensed. So I want to run the check in an entire family. So heal the wildcard with the asterisk, that's the job. You just say the name of the font, which is limited with the hyphen, and then you add the asterisk, and the format you are testing because maybe it is it could be an OTF, but in this case it's a TTF. And again, my yes. Okay. Um, I hope it is okay. Yes. <laughs> As you can see, the process is going to take <laughs> a lot. How, how many? Processors do you have on your computer? Uh, hmm. Oh, you can also see that we have an error outputting um, stuff. Yes. Uh, I, I noticed this before today. Yeah. The very important. And yes, the good thing about testing the entire family is that you could have other fails that are related to a family as a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, some of the some of the checks are in are, are what, what we call a family wide check. So those are checks that compare the f several files in a family to see if they are consistent. Uh, and there there are the font on file specific checks. Mm -hmm. So if you run only on one phone file, all of the family wide checks will will not will not give you any any fail because just it's, single file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is checking just one of the fonts. But here and um, as you can see the process is <sighs> really longer yeah it takes a while and the output is not good but you know that you can run it with minus j for for multi-processing speed it up 
So that, that's another benefit of running on a server on an automated system, uh, because even if it takes a while, whenever it finishes, you will receive an email if you have any problem. So you don't have to just stay looking at this progress bar and waiting, you know. You can just leave it to the servers. Hmm. I should also mention that th there are there are some people uh, working on experimental user graphical user interfaces for from Bakery, but it's not yet uh, ready to be used. But if that goes on and if they actually make it work, then it may be a more more natural way for designers to use the tool. Because I, I suppose designers sometimes get like really scared about the text terminal. <laughs> so although here, from uh, what I I could see in the chat room, lots of people I, know it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm happy about that also. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, uh, it's it's under development. The 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 graphical user interface is still experimental and under development. Oh, Felipe Negron is asking about the automation. Uh, I mentioned Travis CI. Uh, let me type it in the chat. TravisCI.com. It is integrated well into GitHub. Workflow. <laughs> it doesn't take that long. It, I know it's a uh, eighteen family, eighteen fonts family, but uh, it's just because of the video. Sorry. So there was a question if the HTML output is ah, yeah. ignoring the log levels. Possibly, actually. Um, I think the markdown output is ignoring log levels. It's it's just sorting by log levels. So you got the most important stuff at the, at the top. I'm not sure about HTML output. Actually. I didn't even remember we had HTML output. Uh -huh. I, I think you wrote it. I wrote it. <laughs> I, will, I will. I I'll look at that. Okay. I, Maybe that's a bug. If that's a bug, then please file an issue, and I'll take a look at it. Because no, it, it isn't. It, it, it is it reported. Computer. It is reported in the help command of from Bakery, the HTML. Oh, can we? Can we, by the way, show that the Font Bakery um, check profile help? maybe at some point, because there's a lot of interesting stuff yeah. on there. Yeah. I'm going to share the um, link, because I think we didn't do it before, for the HTML reader for the Markdown, for Markdown report. Oh, there's uh, there's uh, output for Markdown, and there's output for HTML. Mm -hmm. Different different output. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah. just in case you have the Markdown, and that's the HTML based reader. I didn't that's remember what? we had that. Uh, maybe that's because we use Markdown so often. Mm -hmm. I think so. I haven't yeah. used the HTML. It so may be useful for some people, but uh, I think, yeah, not for us. You could try to run the markdown, and with this link, you can copy the result of the markdown and paste it there in the web page, and you can see the report. Mm -hmm. I only have Chrome open here and markdown and terminal. I like to see the beautiful patterns that show up in the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, you could do the, some broderies. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, now I want a t shirt like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would like that also. 
while this is running, do you have another question? Uh, is it working for you now? Have you been able to run the tool or are you experiencing some troubles or difficulties? Please share that with us. You can talk if you want, you prefer to talk, not to write. Um, yeah. And I personally, I would love if you want to share your screen. It would be more. And, and any feedback is uh, really appreciated. Yeah. If you have anything to say about the two, good things, bad things, whatever. Uh, any feedback is appreciated. Other thing uh, I didn't mention at the beginning, but I don't know how comfortable are you right now receiving these fails and warns messages. Uh, for me, at least at the beginning, I wasn't used to this logic of this. Uh, I think it's related with this uh, engineer or font or software process, the test driven development. Um, to receive this uh, at the beginning could be uncomfortable or, um, but it's really, <laughs> it's really great. So that's the logic behind the, what Talif has said, that we love to receive feedback <laughs> because we love to get sales and warrants to see what could be improved. So don't be shy about that also. The only way for us to improve the tool is if we listen to what yeah. people are telling us about ways that the tool is insufficient to their goals. To if if the tool is broken, then we, we gotta we gotta listen to that. Otherwise, or you if know, you have had that's the only way to improve. Sorry, no, that that's the only way to improve. If mm -hmm. we if we get feedback mm -hmm. when it's not working. There's a question about FTX validator. So FTX validator is uh, from Apple, and mm -hmm. it's a tool that ensures the font is well formed and not corrupted. And it, unfortunately, it's a proprietary piece of software. So the only way we could understand what it's doing is by looking at the log messages that it outputs. And the reason why it is important for you to run FTX validator is because uh, I'm not sure if ev always, but at least in some versions uh, of uh, Mac uh, systems, uh, the font will not be installed if yep. it does not pass the checks. I found it great because it runs the same checks that you will uh, receive if you are trying to install a font in a Mac, particularly in the latest uh, system operators. So, for example, at the beginning when they uh, included this in the font tool, um, what is the name of that? I don't remember it because I, the open, the font book, font book is the name, sorry. Um, I used to have this phone that I used to use without any problem, but uh, suddenly I get this report and before knowing all of these the technical stuff and before understanding, uh, I guess, that I was dealing with a software because a phone is more and more conceived as a software. Uh, I didn't understand what phone book was telling me. So now I think to be able to run the TTX validator and to receive um, the warnings or the yeah the results on that would be great because you know that once you solve them, your users are not going to have those same issues when they are trying to install the phone on a Mac. Seventy-four <laughs> percent. Three quarters.
It was just a question um, if we want to share our uh, private contact, if someone doesn't want to share their issues um, publicly. Yeah, but, please. But actually uh, sharing um, these issues on GitHub really helps the project. So we, we absolutely prefer that because we can um, take care of it and we can also document just how it gets solved. So before yeah. you actually file an issue, there's also a search um, on the issue tracker to, to see if someone maybe had the problem before and asked for it. Um, that way we also kind of uh, get a feeling for uh, what is complicated to, to our users um, just by you know seeing how, how the feedback comes in. And there's, so, there's, there's always the possibility of someone else on the internet having the knowledge that we don't have and being able to address an issue that you posted there. If you send this by email to one of us, we would maybe not be able to address it quickly. May, we may even forget, not because we don't pay attention, but because we are overloaded with too, too many requests. And so doing it publicly it is better because it is guaranteed that it will not be lost. Uh, maybe it is not addressed immediately, but there's a much greater chance that someone may work on it. So uh, I think we get the point here by testing an entire family. We are receiving now, I could say that because we are almost only on the past uh, checks, <laughs> the checks that have passed. Yeah. I'm receiving 18 fails and giving is a 18 font family. I think it's the same fail for each font, but you can see now that we are getting 111 ones. It should be a good idea to inspect them uh, to see what is happening. Uh, but Octavio is asking if you can give some hints on how to create profiles, and I think that will be really more interesting. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and you can take that. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, There's documentation, actually, but I was told it's um, not very good, but we could run through that one. Let's see. Um, let me just take a look at these slides, if we have something in the final slides. Well, we have the history of the development of Front Bakery, what happened since the beginning, and then how to contribute. Uh -huh. So yeah, use the tool and report issues. File bugs, ask for new features, propose new checks. Uh -huh. Yeah, these are all contexts that you should not use. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, in the slides we don't have that, but maybe Lasse, you want to show something uh, on the development of custom profiles or custom I, I can I can actually do. Uh, yeah. So please, please share your screen. Yeah, let me desktop share. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. I just, um, I just uh, pasted a link into the check, so I'm going to to visit that one. Writing profiles. Uh, uh, this is this is not a easy step by step. Um, documentation. It's it's more like a um, documentation over all the details, what can go into a profile and how it does uh, work. But I'm just scrolling down, so you can't see a lot. It's it's, it's not the shortest document. Uh, can, um, can you increase a little bit the font size and also uh, maximize your window? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, okay. that's perfect. That's that's really hard for me now to navigate. <laughs> just I'm just going to the um, the actual um, uh, code that's in there. 
Okay, this is, I think. Go follow imports. Doing that on. We should, we actually had a discussion about this to, um, to this is interesting, to um, uh, improve this documentation because it's a lot to read and the quick start is like somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so, but there's one, one um, command that we did not um, introduce yet, that's check profile. And with check profile, you can um, check, you can use custom profiles to check. You can also, like in this case where, where it says font bakery, you can also, you could also call it, um, you could also use Google fonts, for example. Then we would just run the Google fonts. Um, profile, but it can also, like, if it's a module that you can include with Python, but you can also give it a path to a Python file that implements your profile. Um, so I'm just also trying to increase the files to screen size here. I don't know how to do this, actually. Come on. And then, oh, yes, now I understand. Never do this. Is this good? This is good, right? You can read this. Um, so no. I'm going to, to create a new profile. Uh, I ate I, I, uh, my. But py, um, and this does not contain anything now. So we go back to our browser and see if we can get stuff in there. Um, here's here's a file, right? This is has a lot of um, comments in it to kind of to explain everything that goes on, and it also includes some checks. So I uh, just try to select every come on let's do that. Select everything in here and put this into my file and see if I can make this um, huge bakery stuff for us. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's complete because it starts with. Uh, Stuff like from Font Bakery import and so on. So that's, um, come on. <laughs> How did I lose this? <laughs> this is the, the big screen, right? Yeah. I, I don't see when it ends and then. Uh -huh. <laughs> one more, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more. One more. That looks good. Okay, that's it. Control C. Um, that's my terminal. I'm going to use Vim um, on this file, which doesn't contain anything, and I'm going to paste everything in here. So, um, you can, I could just talk about what this all does, but I prefer just to try and see if it, if yeah, it, let's, uh, let's if run. it just runs, if it's, yeah. if it's completed. It has, um, very dull check that only says if the font has any uh, glyphs in the glyph table. Like uses it uses from font tool the TT font object and uh, loads the glyph table and then counts the number of glyphs in there. And that's the only check I think in there. So I'm going to write this and now I can try to run it. Font bakery. Um, File. Uh, now I'm going to use this as a file name, so I'm pretty. I'm making sure this looks like a file, and then we are going to need uh, fonts. Could you have your um, copy of Google Fonts lying around? Uh, robot. No, robot is not in OVL. Diplomata and Diplomata has uh, TTF files in it. So I'll go to TTF, just run it. 
and um, that was very quick. It has eight passes, so it didn't report any errors. Um, block level. Um, let's just put in debug, which is the lowest block level, and then we get also, also all the um, passes explicitly reported here, right? So. Uh, the rationale is obviously something. Oh, that's another one. That's one that I imported actually. That's interesting. So the the profile uh, I just wrote. Um, it imports a check from a given profile and adds a custom one. And adds a custom one. Yes. Yes. So this is the. Oh, there's even more checks. So oh. um, so there, there's some interesting stuff. Going on, and, and that's the the most basic stuff you can do to write your own profile. The, can the, we see the, the pass message for the custom one that you created? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Where is that? Same version. Unicode. Some glyphs in this TTF. That's it. Below, there's, below. there's also like a a hello tag. That's, uh -huh. that's probably one. There is an R in the font file name. Diplomata regular, you know. <laughs> like so, that's that's just yeah. yeah. And some gloves are in the TTF, so we have more than one check actually in the yeah. Um, just let me go down there again. Then um, like yeah, my my custom data. So um, to to before I share to like in this in this um. In, in this directory, there's actually nothing else, just uh, the ATAP high profile and the virtual environment that I created. So it's it's just it's totally possible that I, you know, would have a requirements um, X file, like usually named exactly like this, which just says font bakery, and then it has this ATAP high command, and then basically I could start use that to start my custom profile. At some at some point, I would probably install the ATIPI profile as a um, module into my like virtual environment, then I wouldn't use a path to the file name here, then I would just use the module name, which would probably look like like this, right? But um, in this case, I want to be um, sure that it uses ATIPI. Uh, oh. That it just uses the file name and the um, and, um should we look into the file, or is that does it kind of maybe I thought it. I just saw that I just saw that uh, Marek is here. Hi, Marek. Should should I just keep talking about this? Uh, would Marek be interested in saying something? Saying hello? <laughs> uh, we, we can open your microphone if you want to say something. Uh, I can open. Uh, uh, I actually missed the question. No, no, I, I, I'm just saying that I'm happy to see you here, Marek. And oh, uh, oh. <laughs> so Marek, Marek is is uh, is a Google engineer, and uh, he's also been using Font Bakery internally, I guess. Uh, maybe you want to say something about the tool? Yeah, I mean, uh, I work on Noto Fonts, and uh, right now, Font Bakery is the key tool that I use for um, testing or looking at Noto Fonts before I publish them. Because Noto requires me to, basically, we get the sources, we build uh, funds from the sources, and after that, we need to verify that they work, so or that they are good funds. So, Fund Bakery is it for me. So, thank you, thank <laughs> you to the Fund Bakery team. Thanks, guys. I love the tool. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we've we've also been working a little bit on CJK checks and. Things like that, right, Marek? Uh, that's that's an ongoing uh, demand. Correct. Yeah. 
Ну, Um, okay, I'm, I can just keep on talking until you guys um, tell me I should stop. But because this is a rather basic sample, it's probably quick. So this is the first active line that um, imports checks and conditions, which are basically the two types of functions that, that a profile is made of. Uh, this imports all the uh, log lab, uh, log message statuses that we can use. Um, profile factory is a bit of um, um, built-in magic. So if you got if you got this imported, it it figures out it, uh, how to how to build the profile based like based on what is in this module that we are writing right now. Um, this is a special like um, name that is used by the profile factory to import other stuff. So um, in this case, it imports the CMAP and head profiles. But we just said before, we only said that we have an open type profile and universal profile. But those profiles are actually made up of more specific profiles. So all the checks that um, are related to the CMAP table are in the CMAP profile, for example. So this is just this profile is importing two like profiles for the CMAP table and the head table. There were additional checks we were seeing. And this is, um, as I said, the most minimal way to, to, to do your custom profile and import other checks. This is the first line, add check. Like this is a Python decorator, it's called. And the minimal thing you've got to give it is, um, is the ID of the check. I'm using like a uh, my domain here to make sure it's not coming from Google or whatever. And uh, just I can basically, if I have control over the domain, I can use it because that makes sure that I am um, the, the owner of the ID. And uh, just, this is the example hello. And this is the first, like this is the actual function. It doesn't even take the font. So this is very boring. It just yields us hello world. Yeah, um, that's a simple check you can write in the world, right? You, can, you could also yield fail, hello world. That would be a failing check, but this doesn't even use fonts to read it. But the next check is one uh, interesting. Interesting. It uses a font, and we don't ever like define where font is coming from. This is um, this is. A condition we call it condition that is built into the um, the, uh, the, the profile the profile factory that we were using importing just in the beginning. So by by telling it, I want to use this profile factory. Um, I also get some some already built in stuff. And font is just the file names. So that's not that's not a true type. Uh, like a TT font from Font Tools, this is just a string. So this yeah, is just... through, uh, I, I will mention that throughout the source code, we have some conventions. And whenever we type uh, all lowercase font, uh, it means the file name. And if we say TT font, it means the the Font Tools TT font uh, object. Yeah, the this... binary parsed. And in plural, it's a list of objects. Either a list of file names or a list of TT font objects. So the the font bakery check runner does um, does figure out itself how much how many tests it needs to run, um, and it calls this function itself using like a, a thing we call dependency injection. So these arguments of the check functions are actually like dependencies of the function and from bakery check runner will calculate them for you. You can use these conditions like look similar like a check, but it's marked with add condition. These conditions are used to to um, define the namespace 
or the like the, the namespace in a way that this is a name and the stuff you get back from this name has to be created somewhere or somehow and the conditions are actually creating those those um, items in the namespace. Uh, that's an example yeah, of a condition. That's a condition, yeah, right. So th this condition um, defines is underscore TTF in um, in the namespace, and now I can use it. It's, it's also called condition because I can use it to, to automatically um, skip tests. Like in this case, uh, we, we would skip this check if this is not a true platform. Um, which we define by if it has a glyph table, it's a true test. Um, we are not using actually this condition as an as an um, argument in the check, but you see TTF as an argument, and that's basically also very similar defined like this. Well, defined the default, and then it returns um, the result of that it uses font like the family like the font family name as, as argument, and it returns the result of uh, font tools, uh, ttlib, tt font, with the font as argument. So it loads the font in, in font tools and returns that. Basically, tt font is exactly, is also defined just as a condition, but it comes with um, the fonts profile that we it imported at the beginning. So this automatically is, Skipping stuff is can be very handy. Actually, you could also skip checks like when yielding or returning a, a skip status like this in a check. But um, this is very convenient in, in many cases. For example, if you only want to check for stuff that is in um, open type like CSF flavored fonts, you you wouldn't um, you you would skip. Anything else that does not have. And it's very handy, especially for instance, a very common use of this is a condition is variable font. So if a check only applies to variable fonts, then it doesn't make sense to run it on a non variable font, on a static, right? So uh, we, we can just place conditions equal is, is variable font. And it's very handy, very, very, very easy to just skip the checks that do not apply. And and even you can have multiple conditions, which it, which makes it much simpler than just than if we were manually placing if statements in the implementation of a check. So it makes the implementation cleaner to read, and the conditions uh, more explicitly uh, stated. Right. Yeah. So so that's a minimal example to to write. Um, Right checks. There is like this document that we have here is much, much longer than just this example. And I'm not sure if, if we should go into these depths. Maybe we have to make a like some other time a more specific uh, workshop for writing, like actually writing productively profiles. Uh, but, we have a question from Oli Meyer, uh, whether from Bakery supports CFF2 already. Uh, we do have some checks uh, that were contributed to us by uh, Adobe uh, engineers. Uh, they have some CFF2 checks, yes. Not a lot, but a few. Uh. Not, I'm not sure. Yeah, they contributed some, right? Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't tell actually. We we yeah. are yep. ourselves mm -hmm. not not working a lot with um, CSF fonts. Oh, that's it, a good example of conditions. You have a condition: TD font, ECFF, CFF analysis. There are three conditions for this check. Okay, TT font is probably well because that's not condition. It's always going to to be an argument, like possible as an argument. Is CFF is and CFF analysis? Oh, that's interesting. 
they don't need to we've got to this is interesting because uh it's you don't need to list them all in here this i think that's maybe naming misunderstanding this and the check the key conditions it's only for skipping or not skipping so yeah um the, you, you don't need to list all the dependencies uh that that uh, cff analysis has, has. But see if F analysis is, is a nice condition, probably it's a way to Ultra. Some, someone on radio now. Tem boi na linha. So here's here's an example <laughs> where they where they explicitly um, support CFF two in their CFF analysis. So yes, I would I would argue there is at least to some extent some support for CFF2. It's not that we never heard about it. And that's basically, that's, that's a good example. So this takes TK font and it creates a whole new um, uh, class in this case even that it returns. And then you can use it in, in the report, like in the check itself to report whatever CFF analysis found. And then also what we didn't see before is um, we returned um, check results, but actually each check can be a generator and can yield check results, which means that it can produce not just one result, but many results. And the overall results of a result of a check is just the worst um, status, like the worst status uh, level it reported. But you can have a lot of many, many lines of, of, of things you found out, your, your checks. Um, what time is it now? Oh, we have 15 minutes still. Um, I see some familiar names here in the, in the participants list. Uh, Aaron Bell, I've seen, I think you posted some, some issues before on the on the issue tracker would you want to say something give us some some feedback let us stop this speech is, uh can, can a moderator give aaron bell rights to speak if, if he wants to uh, can a moderator please uh, open the microphone for Aaron Bell? Okay. Hello, Aaron. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hey, cool. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I, so, I mean, I have a bit of an interesting background because I worked at Microsoft, so I'm used to using the Microsoft font validation tool uh, back in the day. And um, because it was quite so old, I got used, very used to ignoring a lot of the issues it was finding. Um, so it's been great to use uh, Font Bakery to be able to look at things in the, with a more modern tool chain and uh, with more modern uh, checks, which is really great. Um, so that's been really fun. I, I filed a couple of bugs on the GitHub, though I realized a couple of them were already um, issues that have been called out. So I might end up going through and just trying to patch some of those myself if I can figure all that out. But uh, yeah, no, I'm just uh, good to learn more about the functionality and glad to be here. Good. good. Well, thanks. Actually, we, are, we would be interested in um, the checks you think are uh, missing in Font Bakery that are in the Microsoft Font Validator. Yes. <laughs> well, we like those, close I can't traffic. say that I, I know those particularly well. I mean, I know that uh, Hintock did a, a, I think he did a fairly comprehensive um, rewrite of that tool, um, though it does not include the rasterizer checks um, simply because you don't have uh, Microsoft is not uh, open sourcing the clear type rasterizer, so that's one tool that's not made available. Um, but other than that, I actually, to be honest, I, I have not run Pontval in a long time, so I, I don't really remember what what all it was checking. Um, 
I think maybe Sai has some memory of this thing a bit more. I'm not sure if they're even using it these days. But, you know, uh, we, we have, we, we are interested in essentially dropping Font Valdero from the dependencies of Font Bakery because it's frequently a headache to set up for, for users. It may be confusing in the documentation on how to, how to install the, the dependencies and so on. And, uh, and in general, it's just a headache to, a headache to maintain. And we would much rather have them the, the relevant good checks ported into the more modern infrastructure uh, so that we can benefit from this idea of having clear rationale text for each of them, documentation and so on. Uh, otherwise, we are just treating frontal data as a black box. And it does not yeah. benefit much from the fact that it's free software as well. It's just treat it as a black box. Uh, so we, we, we'd rather have it in Python natively and so on. So, but in, oh, order yeah, sure. that, in order to do that, we have to have some kind of prioritization of what, which ones to tackle first, which ones to port from the sources, which ones to ignore because they're just legacy, not valid anymore or really old stuff. Yeah, I, I, I had actually suggested to Hintac that he rebuild it in Python, and he decided not to do that, I think, just because he either wasn't familiar with it or, or disagreed with uh, my perspective on that. Um, but I think Sai probably has a better sense of which mm -hmm. of those checks are probably still useful. I, um, I don't actually, I've not been, <laughs> I've not really been using font validator for about five years. So <laughs> um, Ali, Ali on the Windows font team would probably, probably be the best person to answer that. Um, yeah, I, we're, we're not using it. We have our, our vendors um, do the testing. We really don't do anything in-house anymore. And I'm sure a lot of our vendors are using um, are using Font uh, Bakery and other tools. Oh yeah, we should mention that uh, there's been a um, job offering at Adobe uh, some time ago that explicitly mentioned that it was a, a, a bonus, uh, like ma many, many bonus points if you have familiarity with Font Bakery. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun to see that. So, yes, I would like to ask all the participants, how do you feel, how, what are you feeling or thinking right now about your phones, uh, if this was helpful for you to find some new things regarding the quality or your maybe anything at all? Oh. But Wayne, thank you for your comment, but were you able to run from Bakery at all or you couldn't? Oh. Okay, Octavio. Alana. <laughs> Great, Alana. Thank you all <laughs> you for your comments. We really appreciate them. To Aaron about the uh, FTX thing, I know for a fact they're using FTX. It was more of I meant um, are the FTX checks going to be implemented in Font Bakery? And I, I think I know the answer, which is that like make issues for each of them. And, yeah, and it would be really useful uh, whenever you have something that is like a collection of checks, like a third party tool that does many things. It, it is kind of pointless to have an issue saying port everything into 
into Python native, you know, because it's so many stuff. It would be much better to have a list. And whenever we have uh, one individual issue proposing a new check, but proposing a single new check and providing documentation on why is it important, what kind of stuff is this check performing, uh, that, that's much more useful, right? But that would be a fun job, right, Felipe, for somebody to go through each of those yeah. checks and yeah. to, to say, let's deprecate the FTX validator ch uh, check in favor of this list of issues of yeah. checks that are the same thing, but in Python. Yeah, that, that's many, many, many hours of work. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Justin is saying that this was great, uh, but a workshop on build tools and build scripts <laughs> might be a good follow-up for this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a repo from my uh, Type Weekend talk that has links to all of the um, tools discussed here. I don't know. It's not a full workshop, but you could check out the links, and that would be helpful, maybe. Because it is, it's that, that sort of thing. It's kind of not our scope to discuss how to, you know, run front, front engineering. But, um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot to know, and, and it kind of embeds into it. So it totally makes sense. Just, yeah, I don't know. But Mirka, are you, aren't you doing such workshops, actually? Yeah, I weekend. Um, but you're, I mean, it was probably too much information. Um, because it really, I tried to cover the, um, like how to, how to use Git, how to like <laughs> how to write a bash script, how to use font bakery. And it's like, that's too that's much. So much information. Yeah. Yeah. And you can make a proper like uni um, of it class. But it's, it's good that he has that link because there is all that information <laughs> listed. So. Yeah. Yeah, the, the thing if you're really new to everything um, is look at number eight on that list of workshop links to missing semester. There's an MIT mm -hmm. open courseware um, uh, just course on, on how to use um, command line tools, essentially. And it's invaluable. Excuse me, I, I would like to take this final 60 seconds to say that uh, <laughs> the recording will stop. So we got to have, at least in the recording, to say th thanks for ATIPI to, to offering us this space. Uh, I think it's probably a, a, a good a good workshop. Uh, lots of informative things we tried to, to bring you here. Uh, sorry if, if, if it was boring at some portions or if, if I did not uh, state clearly everything I wanted to say, but it was a pleasure to be here with you. Yes. Yeah, Thank thanks, you all. Thanks, Philippe, for doing all that talking. Thank you to the speakers. Really appreciate it. It's been very informative. Um, and yeah, uh, we'll, we'll let the time expire so that we can have a good three hour recording for people who want to go back and watch it later. Sure. Yes. And, and people should log their issues on Git and GitHub and not, not send any email or tweets to the speakers. <laughs> yeah. So we'll thank you again. That was great. It's not forbidden, but recommended because it's public, the issue, so. Yeah. 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 Let's share, in the spirit of openness and sharing, that's what we should do. All right. Great, well, thanks everybody. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you all for- And thanks, and thanks for all the sponsors as well. <laughs> of course, yeah, especially Google and um, as the top sponsor. Right. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Everyone. Awesome. Bye. 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 Bye.